Hello. We have two stories today from Am I the Jerk? Which I hope you enjoy as much as I do because with all the recent Reddit drama, it's one of the few subreddits still popping off these days. If you liked Pro Revenge, well, bad news. There hasn't been a single post in two months. Reddit news aside, let's get to our first story that will leave you feeling like you need a shower. And no, not because it features a woman who's seemingly allergic to sanitation or basic soap, but the real reason behind that gets exposed after years of digging. Story 1 I don't think I'm in the wrong here, but maybe I'm being unreasonable. I don't know. I, 24-year-old female, have been with my girlfriend, 22-year-old female, for about two years now. She's wonderful and I love her a lot. On our very first date, something I noticed was that she didn't seem very concerned with cleanliness. Something to note is that masks were still mandatory where we live and so COVID concerns were still very much a thing. We ended our date by grabbing a snack that she wanted us to bring back to her place. We got there and she immediately started taking everything out without washing her hands. Maybe I'm just a clean freak, but this surprised me a little. I brushed it off until she excitedly tried to get me to try some charcuterie jelly she had. She did this by dipping her finger directly into the jar and holding it out for me to try. At this point, I felt pretty icky about it and jokingly said something like, and get a taste of all that stuff you were touching earlier? We were out and about, public transit, etc. She seemed a little embarrassed, but agreed that was a little gross, but still didn't wash her hands. This was the first day we knew each other. To this day, I have not witnessed her wash her hands with anything more than water. <gasps> That's so gross. <laughs> Even that takes me asking multiple times. She will go about her whole day, use the washroom, etc. without washing her hands. She loves finding treasures when we're walking around, like abandoned toys, household stuff, clothes, etc. Even if they are visibly very dirty. She touches everything and anything, doesn't wash her hands. She also showers, maybe twice a week, doesn't use soap there either. The only time she washes her hair or uses soap to clean her body is when I literally do it for her, which she says she enjoys. This wouldn't bother me so much if it weren't for a few things. She likes to cook for me loves to dip her fingers into jars and drink straight from bottles instead of using silverware and cups. She touches my face a lot and to be honest, she stinks. And on to my main point, she is always sick. She tends to be very sensitive and gets very upset if she thinks that I'm implying that she's gross in any way. So I try to be as gentle as possible when encouraging her to wash herself. Eventually, I guess I got fed up when she was complaining about being sick again. I said that maybe the reason she keeps getting colds, COVID, etc. because her hygiene isn't very good. She got really quiet, cried a bit, and now she thinks that I think she is disgusting and cries whenever I bring up washing hands or anything like that. She used to just laugh and brush it off, but now she seems to be really upset by it. I don't know what else to do, and I feel like a jerk. But I don't think I did anything wrong either. Edit. I'm getting a lot of the same questions in the comments and I responded to some, but I'll add it here. What about when we're intimate? I only get down after she's had a thorough shower done by me. Have you ever asked why she doesn't want to wash or why she doesn't like soap? Yeah, and she usually brushes it off with humor or starts crying. The little information I've been able to gather is that her parents were kind of neglectful by not really teaching her about this stuff. She also used to be bullied for being the smelly kid at school, and past partners have called her gross. She claims to not like the soap I have, even though I have several different types. Bar, liquid, Castile unscented baby soap. She also claims to be a dirty hippie or a raccoon girl. And I think she just considers this like a quirky personality trait. You're gross too for being with her. Yeah, well, I feel gross when she touches me, shares a bed with me, touches my things, cooks for me. I always change my sheets after she leaves, clean everything. I can usually get away with not eating what she cooks as I'm vegetarian and she usually cooks with meat. The odd time she cooks something vegetarian, I'll insist on doing the veggie cleaning and chopping and dump it in the pan or whatever for her. 
so minimal touching on her part. I know a lot of people don't wash their hands often, but I've always washed mine frequently, and I sanitize my phone every day. I don't like feeling this way, but the way she reacts makes me feel like I'm overreacting. If I knew she was like this on the first date, why did I keep dating her? Why are you monitoring her bathroom and hygiene habits so closely? You're a creep. It's one of those things that sort of builds up over time and you don't really see how bad it is until you're deep into it. I was in a long-term abusive relationship prior to this, and I'm not trying to compare this to abuse, but it's the same idea. A little problem snowballing until one day you're like, dang, this is bad. I knew her hygiene wasn't 100% right away, but I didn't know it was literally non-existent until we started spending prolonged periods of time at each other's places. Then using the bathroom with each other in the room versus alone with the door closed. Then I'd see her in the shower, just standing there under the water, not lathering up, using the toilet, then just rinsing her hands with water, etc. She complains that she doesn't like the soap I have, but I tell her that I have multiple types of soap. So surely she must be okay with one of them. But no, she just hates using soap, period. Update 1. Thank you all for the comments you guys left on my post. It gave me a lot to think about. It was the slap in the face I needed, I guess. Most of you were really nice about it, but the consensus seemed to be that she needs therapy and I'm gross if I stay with her. And yeah, I feel really gross and I don't want to feel that way. It's interesting that a lot of you suggested she may be autistic or ADHD because she isn't either of those as far as she knows. But I am both autistic and have ADHD. <laughs> I have been in therapy for some time. She has been to therapy on and off since she was a kid. Weird stuff with her parents mostly. They weren't very good to her. Anyway, I gave it a lot of thought and I've realized that my boundaries basically become non-existent in a relationship. I keep letting things slide that I really don't want to. I'm allowing myself to be uncomfortable for her sake. And I've done this in the past, but I don't want to do it anymore. So yeah. I decided I'd be very direct with her and we either get on the same page or I'm done. So I very plainly asked her, why doesn't she want to wash herself? She cried, sobbed about how gross I think she is, but I asked again. And eventually she told me that she just likes when I do it for her. She wants to feel pampered and cared for. And it is definitely a kinky thing. She wants to be a dirty pet that I can clean up. And she thought that I was into it. That's it. No other reason. I never said that I was into it, but I guess I led her to believe otherwise. By agreeing to wash her hair and body from time to time. Honestly, I can't believe that I put up with this for so long. She is a really great girl otherwise, but yeah, this is a deal breaker for me. I told her this and that I didn't want to have to wash her and she just absolutely broke down. Seems to be a deal breaker for her too. She wants someone who will treat her like a pampered pet. So we are done. Anyway, thanks again, guys. I can't believe this is how it ended up, but I guess I'm happier for it. I will never ignore bad hygiene again. Credit voted, not the jerk. In the comments, Lost Boys Gang said, I am actually impressed that it was a deal breaker for the girlfriend. I fully expected her to beg OP not to leave, but nope. If you don't want to keep washing me, then you should probably just go. <laughs> Laugh my butt off. Just send me cat pics, quoting, she wants to be a dirty pet that I can clean up, said, Welp, that's enough internet for the morning. I'm going to go take a shower now. Weevil Season said, these are my favorite kinds of updates. So many are just, well, they're just a jerk, not compatible, and the answer is obvious. Then, once in a while, you get a gem like this right out of left field. They make my life seem so simple and put together. Golden Mandela replied, I know, right? I need to do the laundry and sweep up the dust in the corners, but at least I shower with soap and brush my teeth. I think OP's problem is that she was a bit of a soap pusher and this gave her girlfriend the wrong idea. I mean, put yourself in the girlfriend's shoes. You meet this amazing person who has all of these soaps. Bar, liquid, Castile and scented baby soap. Is it really that unreasonable to think, ooh, goody, we're a match? This person obviously fetishizes soap. Look at that collection. <laughs> I'm going to have to say, not the jerk though, because this girl uses a new spoon for every condiment and every dish. I mean, 
utensils are far superior to digits and no double dipping. I'll tell you right now, I would not have made it past a first date. I could barely hold myself together reading that. Now, I have to go take a shower. Our second story trades one entitled girlfriend for an entitled roommate when she expects everyone around her to change their diets and entire lifestyle to accommodate her sometimes their boyfriend. But like our first story, this one also has a hidden motivation behind it all. So let's draw back the curtains on this entitlement in story two. I, 24-year-old female, have been living with my roommate Layla, 25-year-old female, for about 10 months. We have a two-year lease, so I really want to fix this so we're not miserable for the next year. And to start, I need to see if I'm in the wrong. Layla started dating Kyle about six months ago. Kyle has severe food allergies to shellfish, nuts, and soy, as well as a lot of more mild and moderate allergies. I use nuts and soy a lot in my cooking and some occasional shrimp. Mmm, delish. At first, Layla would tell me that Kyle was coming over. I would just adjust whatever I was planning on making if it was something that would be aerosolized, mostly nuts, and this was fine. He's never had any reactions at our apartment from my food. But it's slowly escalated and now they want me to not keep any ingredient in the apartment that could cause him anaphylaxis. Even if I'm not actively eating or cooking it while he's over. I've refused and they've both pushed back a lot on it. And I snapped a little and told them I don't give a frack about his allergies. I can accommodate him to an extent, but I don't care if the contents of my cabinet make him uncomfortable. He doesn't need to be near my things at all. They're being very dramatic and insisting I'm going to kill him with my selfishness by having closed jars of nuts in the kitchen I pay to use. But I'm not going to have my diet restricted by someone who doesn't even live here. Layla isn't speaking to me at all right now and I feel a little bad now because I do understand how serious allergies are. However, I also think they're overextending boundaries by telling me what I can or can't eat when he's not even here. In the comments, St. Alvis said, not the jerk. Layla would tell me that Kyle was coming over. Well, easy solution, he shouldn't. Your environment is incompatible with his needs. Someone who doesn't even live here. That's the beginning and end of this, as far as I'm concerned. Reddit voted, not the jerk. Update one. I sat down with Layla a few days after my initial post and really talked with her about why I felt her and Kyle's request was unacceptable. Then I laid out my biggest concerns. I eat mostly plants, so nuts and soy are like 50% of my protein. So my grocery bill would increase because I'd have to make it up in animal products. Who's going to pay for that? I'm not vegetarian, but I don't really want to eat like that and I definitely don't want to pay for it, so would they make up that increase? I honestly didn't trust them to stop there. I already did what I felt was a reasonable accommodation and it wasn't enough. So how long until they take coconut, eggs, and tomatoes from me too? It was weird AF to ask me in the first place. I felt really disrespected because this is my home and I don't take second place to a guest. I can to her personally, of course, but that doesn't extend to the apartment. I said I would agree to continue not using his serious allergens when he was present or soon to be, and that was the line. It didn't go over well at all and Layla told me I was overreacting. She said I could just do it and kept talking over me when I tried to say that I wouldn't. Eventually, she slipped up with a, well, what if he moved in? And I said, absolutely not, and ended the conversation with her for the night. We argued in circles about it for nearly two weeks, and once it was out, she didn't drop it. I realized it wasn't going to get better, so I did what I didn't want to do and told her that I was going to the landlord about breaking my part of the lease, and she freaked out. I don't know where Kyle's money goes, but apparently he doesn't have any because she was yelling about not being able to afford it on her own. And he couldn't help even if he moved in. I told her that this had gone way too far and I didn't think I could be happy living here with her anymore. If it were easier for her to leave instead, that would be fine too. She was really upset and I said I wouldn't force her out or leave her suddenly on the lease alone, but it was one or the other. Eventually, she accepted it and decided she would move back in with her dad. That was the end of April and she's fully moved out as of this week. My childhood best friend, Allie, has been flip-flopping on moving to my city for forever now. I called saying I had a cheap open bedroom if she came right away and got her to finally pull the trigger on it. 
and it helped Layla out because she didn't have to pay to break the lease since I agreed to cover the full rent at my own risk. Allie has stuff to tie up in our home state still, but she's already sent me half of July's rent. I've just got to squeeze for a little while, but I'll make it. I'm super excited to see her and show her around. Plus, we've been cooking together since fourth grade, so that'll be a nice change. <laughs> and I can get a cat. It's been a bit of a rough couple of months, but I'm very happy with how things are looking right now, so I just wanted to share with you guys. In the comments, Gleaming the Cubicle quoting, he couldn't help even if he moved in, said, Layla, dumb as rocks. May Wellflower replied, well, now Layla can let her mooching hobosexual boyfriend over at her dad's place. If her dad is just as dumb as she is. Thorn Grove quoting, what if he moved in, said, what if I slathered myself in peanut butter and hugged him like a python? <laughs> Adventurous B said, I remember when this was first posted. As soon as they started asking her to not buy them at all, I knew the next step was to move him in. Trust me one replied, Oh, and I'm sure the plan was that rent would still be split in half instead of thirds. Adventurous B added, that was 100% the plan. The roommate told her he couldn't pay her half if OP moved out. He had no money. I definitely have to agree with Reddit's verdict of not the jerk. You know Layla is just going to move her boyfriend into her room at her dad's place because that's the kind of person she apparently is. The real kicker here was that they accused OP of potentially killing him with her selfishness. Right. Because she's the selfish one. Good riddance with these two, and what an upgrade to childhood bestie and a kitty. And that's it for today. Until next time, shine bright, Starlight. Yahoo! If you've enjoyed the story and would like to hear more, consider liking, subscribing, and leaving a comment. Thanks, and bye for now.